Welcome to Smells Like Teen Parent, a podcast for adolescents and the adults who annoy them. We begin our podcast today with this special back to school. No, really, we're going back to school now. Episode with reflections on the changes this year has brought, recommendations on how to help families with adolescents set goals for a successful return to the classroom, and an interview and advice from my own adolescent. If you would like to add to this discussion or have feedback, you can email me at smellsliketeenparent at gmail.com or even leave me a message at 707-290-7438. Okay, quick disclaimer section. As a counselor and consultant, I maintain confidentiality of my client's information and their circumstances unless they agree to share on this podcast. I may also swear because swearing helps me be a better parent. Okay. So, I'd like to start our episodes with an intention. Okay, deep breath. Today's mantra is, leave your laundry on the fucking floor. Laundry piles are like slain Jedi. Since March 2020, school has gotten really weird. But you know... It was no cakewalk before that. If you don't know what a cakewalk is, it's this weird, boring game where you walk slowly around in a circle, and then sometimes you get a cake. Actually, that's pretty awesome. I miss cakewalks. Okay, so school like parenting is not a cakewalk. I mean, I could go on and on about how education is a cornerstone in our democracy and we need to close the learning gap and build more equity in our system. And of course, we need more resources for parents like free preschool, shout out to my sister, more counselors at school. Right now, I don't know if you know this, but best practices is like 350 students to one counselor. But realistically, what I'm hearing from counselors, it's more like 500 up to 800 students to one counselor. Uh, You know, what does this do to mental health or college support? And, you know, parents are working, so how are they also supposed to handle this? Blah! So much, right? And, you know, I... I'm an advocate for students and a counselor, and I also recognize, like, I'm a white lady who lives in a middle-class suburban community, and that means I have privilege. And so while I'm sharing my privileges and experiences, I know I do not speak for all people and that I have my own share of biases that I'm examining, but your feedback is also welcome to help check me. Uh, I mentioned that I'm a private academic counselor, and I was also a public school counselor until summer 2020. I met with students from elementary through grad school level, and with COVID, you know, I really got an inside look in their lives. I saw their homes, their rooms, I met their dogs and their siblings and their boyfriends, sometimes the boyfriends weren't even supposed to be there, and their girlfriends and their parents. They saw my critters, they met Watson and baby Lightning, and they met my child and my messy living room, and they sometimes saw my yard. For the first time, our education was unrestrained by the walls of a school. And on the other hand, you know, we had windows into one another's lives through this computer screen, our lives, which provided on one hand, sort of vulnerability and familiarity as we're meeting, you know, them wearing their hoodies in their bedroom and me like in my office in the living room. And on the other hand, it was sort of confining, you know, when we had to work through the stuff and make our connections and build our rapport in these teeny tiny dimensions. And now we're moving into another stage, which is a mix of in-person and virtual, where we're sort of faking that we can easily move back and forth between these two worlds. And internally, people are coming to me and they're like, what the f*** Jenny? I don't know how to do this. And I don't have the answers. None of us knows how this is going to go. And neither do our schools and neither do our leaders. We are coming up against extraordinary uncertainty. And uncertainty causes anxiety. The number one issue that I deal with in my work is help me manage my anxiety. And I guess the question really is, like, how are we going to move forward in this time of uncertainty? Are we going to make friends with our anxiety or are we going to let it bully us into fear-based thinking? As parents and caregivers, we can lead by acknowledging uncertainty. We can walk with ourselves grounded, even though to some degree anxiety is really just part of life. And we can recognize the resilience and imagination in our adolescents and help them befriend those fears. I encourage families 
and teens to work on managing their anxiety through three fundamentals, mindfulness, recognition of our common humanity, and loving kindness. So mindfulness just simply means paying attention to what's happening right in the moment. For example, and I have my loaf cat with me with the green eyes, the big smushy loaf cat, and the dog with the fluff in his mouth. Ask yourself, how has your day been going? What did you eat for lunch? I know that you don't remember. You, you don't remember, do you? Did you even eat lunch? Recognition of our common humanity means realizing that everyone, your mail carrier, your teachers, your boss, the person standing in front of you in the grocery store buying all that meat, you know, they're all uncertain and anxious about what comes next. And then we can just take a moment and send them a little loving kindness. I like to pretend that the person driving like an asshole on the road is always like rushing to deliver a baby or they're about to have a baby. It's just about taking a breath, noticing what is right here in front of us. I am 11 years old in, in Earth years. What is the dog doing right now? Um, chewing up his toys. He has fluff in his mouth. And what's happening? In- <laughs> Squeak! Your hand art is pretty amazing. I know, I drew eyes on my hands. Wow. And they're all rolling at you. All uh, of them. There's so many eyes rolling at me. Exactly. Exactly. So does that mean if you have your hand eyes rolling at me, then you don't have your regular eyes rolling at me? Yes. Yes, it does. It means that exactly. It seems like a pretty good trade. Mm-hmm. And then you can't, like, get mad at me for blinking because I'll just blame it on my hand. I got you there, Mom. You got me there, Lenora. <laughs> So then we send them out some loving kindness. Loving kindness is just the generous flow of selfless love towards ourselves and others, which make us better equipped to handle the challenges of parenting or being parented. Studies show that loving kindness meditation makes us less self-critical and self-destructive in our thoughts. It increases resilience and recovery and actually reduces physical pain. According to meditation teacher Sharon Salzberg, practicing loving kindness takes time because it's the act of opening ourselves up to compassion for others. And when we are doing that, we start to realize where we have the resistance in ourselves. It helps me maintain my equilibrium when, especially when I'm thinking about relationships where I am experiencing conflict. You know, I I like to start with someone I love, my adolescent, for example, you know, and I just just say, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be free from suffering. That's all it is. And I just think of, of that person. Uh, and then I go to a neutral party, someone maybe we come into contact with, but we don't have a close relationship with, you know, your Lyft driver, the receptionist at school, the neighbor who lives in the meth house down the street and rides that tiny bike and has that really beautiful rose garden. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be free from suffering. And then we up the ante and we start to send it out to people we have a difficult time with. The politician who makes your stomach turn, your ex, the driver in front of you with the offensive bumper stickers. So we practice that and that can take some time to get there. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be free from suffering. I was thinking of John Hannity right now. How about you? As I'm doing this meditation, I'm thinking, you know, how much less harmful would he be in his speech if he was happier and free from suffering? Our teens are going through ongoing friend issues that make them feel awful. Loving kindness can be a way to help put them back in the driver's seat. You know, put them in a position of power rather than feeling like the victims. I did this exercise last week with one of my students who was having an issue with a frenemy. That'll be a podcast coming up. And we started with her mom. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be free from suffering. And then we went to, I think it was um, somebody she bought her boba tea from. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be free from suffering. And then uh, she practiced putting this out to this frenemy. And as she was doing it, she's just like, I can't. I'm not ready. And I'm like, okay. You know, we have this conversation about what would it be like if she was happy? She wouldn't be posting this stuff 
about you on social media. She wouldn't be confronting you in class. You would be free from suffering as well. And so we start to make those connections for them that they're not the victims of this person, this other person who has all the power, but they actually have just as much power through the act of compassion. Since I probably wouldn't be humble or desperate enough to make my own parenting podcast without being a parent in the first place, I wanted to go right to the source and interview my own emerging adolescent, Lenora, who goes by Six. Welcome to the podcast, Six. Yeah. Since you have so much wisdom already, I wanted to get your thoughts and feelings about a few things. All right. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you are looking forward to most about this school year. I think I'm really looking forward to not spending like my entire day at home and having a little bit more freedom at school. I think I'm kind of excited about getting to switch between periods even though middle school is a lot more tiring than elementary school. Mm -hmm. And also I think I'm excited to learn new construct concepts. I think I'm gonna be learning algebra pretty soon, and maybe I'll just get to discover kind of what I'm more into, things that I'm into and that I might want to study in the future. Yay! What are some of the concerns or fears that you have about starting school this year? Well, like I said, I mean, it's really tiring. And I think it's going to be a little hard to manage homework, especially since as soon as I come home, I'm going to want to take a nap. <laughs> and what helps you manage, like what helps you kind of keep things running smoothly for yourself? I I think it's easier when I take breaks and stuff, because if I'm just working for like an hour hours on end without a break it might get a little tedious yeah i'll just work for like half an hour and then take a break for like five minutes then go back to working maybe yeah maybe that would be good and also getting the right amount of sleep that i need because that is crucial what time do you think is a good bedtime for you as a sixth grader i think probably around 9 30 would be good i mean sometimes as long as you're getting eight hours of sleep, sometimes people might want to stay up a little later just because it's hard for them to go to sleep. As long as you're getting like a full eight hours of sleep, then that is good. What helps you stay organized? Having certain places where I put my stuff, just like knowing where everything is, helps me keep organized and also like frequently taking breaks to just organize everything or else it just piles up and piles up and and by that point it's just a big mess. Mm. How can I support you doing well in school? Probably just you know be able to give me the time that I need and if I need a break or if I need sleep be able to give me that with patience and also one of the really big things is like you know, because sometimes you might be driving me, but getting me to school on time, because if I got tardy, like, that would be really bad, because I could get detention, and I don't want to get detention. So you want to be you want to be at school on time. That's a priority for you. Definitely, yes, definitely. What do I do right now that does not work for you? I think just sometimes when you get a little impatient, if I'm, like, really tired, because I know that you may not see it, but it everybody has has those emotions, has those moments, and just realizing that is like important. So you'd like me to practice being more patient with you? Yeah, I mean, just when I'm like really tired or having a hard day, and I mean sometimes you are, but sometimes not. Okay, well, I appreciate your your input and. Do you have any advice for other students or their parents and caregivers? Really, everyone's different. Everyone has a different learning method for their own needs because that's just how people work. So I think the advice would probably be to just find out what works for you. Like if people keep on telling you to use a planner, but you know that it doesn't work, like you you can tell them that because if you don't there are methods that people keep on saying that are going to like help you and suit you and it and you know for a fact that it doesn't work then you don't have to do that you have to find your own methods of being successful and 
stick to those instead of just what other people tell you. Well, that's it for our show today. Thanks for joining Smells Like Teen Parent. Please follow and share with your friends and enemies. I hope you'll join us for our next podcast, which is all about the college season. What does it take to find a fit? How do you stand out in a good way? And what adults should and should not do to help with the process? We'll hear from high school students, academic consultants and counselors, as well as some advice from yours truly on how to get started. This podcast is brought to you by Metagood handmade small batch artisan lip balms and body care products inspired by love and nature and by soundstripe when you need quality music soundstripe is the answer thank you to my family at the birdhouse and to you listeners may you be safe may you be happy may you be free from suffering oh and don't forget to wear sunscreen every day